What is the ruling when people like Anwa Awlaki or Al Awlaki who praises the actions of that which took place in Fort, Fort Hood, Texas? The people like Anwa are people who should, who should be abandoned. And I was telling the people, and I'm not saying this to praise myself, well, lie, I'm not. When he first came out with the series, the hereafter, and, and I think the wives of the Prophet and the likes, the brothers and sisters was rushing to listen to the stuff. And I didn't know who he was. But I told the brothers and sisters, do not listen to him until we find out who he is. We, didn't know, we don't know who he is. You don't just pick up any book, any CD and listen to it because of the title of the book or how beautiful the book cover looks. You know, a sister goes to the bookstore, she see a flower on the book and the pink book, she just picks up the book because it's pink and got a flower on it or a hijab on it. Or a brother just picks up the book because it says the rights of the husband over the wife. You don't even know what the author is. You stick to those who you know to be from Ahl Sunnah. And look, here we have, from back then, him doing stories of the prophets, you know, the uh, hereafter and all this stuff. Now, he has the, it's clear he has the methodology of the Khawarij. So now those people who've been listening to him, now they got to detach themselves. They got to detox themselves. Got to go to detox now. Because the love of, of, of this individual is in their heart from listening to his lectures over and over and over again. It builds up a love for an individual. This is, why we, we tell, that's, this is why the scholars say, do not listen to the people of innovation. Even if at one time they were upon the sunnah and then they deviated. Is if you listen to those lectures that they were upon the sunnah, or when they were upon the sunnah, what's going to happen is going to build up a love in your heart for them. On his website, he had statements of people to make khuruj against the hukam. This started to come out not too long ago. Alhamdulillah. I never listened to this man. And there are those of us who never listen to this man because it's a principle. We do not take knowledge from people who we don't know. The person is majhul, don't take knowledge from them. Until it becomes clear that this person is a person of the sunnah. So now that we know and it's clear what this individual is upon, then we have to do what is upon us to do and abandon the people of deviance. It says, who says the troops were innocent? Who says they weren't? Number one, the origin regarding human life is prohibition. You can't just take life except with a just cause. Secondly, he himself was in the army, which he shouldn't have been, right? And with him being in the army, he's under contract. And those who live here in the land of the Kufar, we're under contract with these people not to harm them and they not to harm us. It's like you have a covenant. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that the one who kills a person who there's a covenant with, he will not smell the fragrance of paradise. What are you going to do with this statement here? And everyone who is in the service don't have the views of the government. People have to be mindful. Keep off that YouTube, looking at them jihad films and stuff, and the talk of Bin Laden. Leave that stuff alone. This is why the youth are corrupted now. Listening to these individuals and getting all fired up and roused up. People don't even know how to make salah yet. It's a shame. People, jihad, jihad, jihad. You don't even know the ahkam of jihad. There's rules, there's maqasid and dawabit. There's goals, aims for jihad and rules and regulations. And what did Imam al-Bukhari say? Bab al-ilm, qabal al-qawli wal-amal. Chapter, knowledge, precedes statement and actions. Here you have these youth 
ready to rush forward to what they think jihad is. They don't even know the rules and regulations and the aims of jihad. So they wind up getting sucked into the vacuum of the people of devious. So you'll find an individual writing a letter to his family, telling them to be patient and for, to fear Allah. He not fearing Allah. Strap a bomb to himself, walk into a crowded marketplace and kill the innocent. He's making jihad. What deen he following? That's not Islam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu never taught us that. And we never find that in the Quran. This is the problem. The people not returning their affairs back to the ulama. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ghasha falaysa minna. Whoever deceives is not from us. That's general. You cannot deceive a Muslim, nor can you deceive a Kafir. We here in America live here. We're not at war. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a covenant with the Quraysh. Then you have the Sahaba who were in Mecca, who left Mecca. And the Prophet, and they went to Medina, the Prophet told them they had to go back. Because he had an agreement. A, pe a treaty of peace. And then as one of the companions was, uh, was being taken back to Mecca, he tricked the individual, took his sword and killed him. Came back to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Allah has freed me from them. The Prophet said, I can't, I can't help you, you have to go back. So what are they going to say? The Prophet was aiding and abetting the kuffar? So those Sahaba stood on the outskirts and they were fighting against the Quraysh and the Prophet could not help them because he was under a contract with them of peace. Did you find that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when the, 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 the people from the, the Mushrikun were coming to Mecca to visit their families that on their way back they snuck and killed them after having that covenant and treaty of peace? Is that ever mentioned in the Sunnah? Abu Sufyan came to visit his daughter. She did not allow him to sit on the bed with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, trapped them off and snuck and killed them? A covenant is a covenant. It's a shame that people here they live in the Kufar countries, enjoying all the benefits of the Kufar, of the welfare, and this program and that program, working, spending the Kufar money. But yet you at war with them. But you here. Some, something happens to you, you call the police. You call the police. This to show you the contradictions of these people. And it's known. We live in the land of the kuffar. We are under their rule. And as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, those who live in a situation like the situation of Mecca, then those ayat and rules and regulations of Mecca apply to them. And those who live in a situation like Medina, those rules of Medina apply to them. How someone going to apply the rules and regulations of Medina when he lived in a situation at the time when the Prophet Sallallahu was in Mecca. This person doesn't have understanding of the deen. We encourage the brothers and sisters, stick to the scholars of the Sunnah, hold fast to the Kitab and the Sunnah, and leave off these individuals who just rouse, rallying the people up and inciting the people with how calls. These people were ignorant. And you find many contradictions, the people of innovation, you find many contradictions in their statements. Because it's from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That which is from Allah, no contradictions whatsoever. Barakallahu alaykum.